The NFL draft has come and gone, and the Philadelphia Eagles were one of the most active teams throughout the draft. That included not only making some great picks, but obviously some trades as well. And here to talk about it all is Locked On Eagles host, Gino Camilleri. Gino, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Kale. And after that draft, I'm doing even better. If you saw our live reaction, I know Fox 43 retweeted it over the weekend. Lou and I were absolutely appalled at what happened in the best way. I mean, they walked away with five picks, but six players. And I think with Nicobe Dean being your third round pick, plus Jordan Davis, plus AJ Brown, plus Cam Jurgens, what he's going to bring to this franchise, I think the Eagles have set themselves up for the long haul and they're getting younger, quicker, faster, more explosive, exactly what we wanted to see this team do. So that's exactly where I wanted to go. I wanted to get your overall thoughts on the draft hall. I wanted to walk into this draft and walk away with at least eight picks because I'm all about swings of the bat. I'm all about more picks. Nobody knows these guys better than anybody else, but it's tough to look past what they did with those five selections, plus what they gave away for A.J. Brown. You got quality starters year one in Davis. If N'Kobe Dean can walk off the bus day one and his medicals check out, that's a home run steal. Oh, and not to mention, you got A.J. Brown, who's only 24 years old, has two 1,000-yard receiving seasons, adding him to Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard and what this backfield brings. I think this Eagles offense is only going to get better. I think Jonathan Gannon is going to be playing well within his scheme now, moving into year two. And this Eagles franchise, outside of what they did in 2017, where they tried to replace everybody with these Band-Aid signings, older veterans, seems like they're taking the opposite approach now since that 2020 draft, where they seem to be focusing on youth and seeing how they can invigorate this lineup through the draft rather than just purely through free agency. So in that first round, they trade up, presumably in front of the Ravens, to pick Jordan Davis. I mean, just an impact draft addition. Um, expected to learn from Fletcher Cox this year. I mean, what are your thoughts on on the team moving up to grab Davis? You're exactly right, and the Baltimore move was exactly what Lou and I projected as well on our show. If you look at the guys that they put on their defensive line, especially with as many odd fronts as they run. They love those big 350-pound guys that could take up two gaps in the middle. And you talk about learning from Fletcher Cox. I think Jordan Davis, in his own right, is just a unicorn. Like He's going to do things for this defense that we haven't seen. He's going to come in, take up a bunch of space, and make everybody around him more efficient. Oh, at the same time, he also ran a crazy 40-yard dash at 4.7 seconds, which shows his explosiveness. And if you can develop his pass rush ability and pair him next to what they have with Hassan Reddick, Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham bringing him off the bench, this Eagles front, it's going to be like a baseball team with the best relief bullpen in the league. You're going to cycle nearly 10 guys through that front and it all starts with Jordan Davis making everyone better around him because 350 pounders who run 4-7 are as explosive as they are off the line, have as much athleticism and flexibility, do not come as often as you would expect in this league. And sometimes drafting unicorns, these guys that just come out of nowhere, seem like they're built in a lab, that's the best way to go about it. Plug everybody on them go to their natural positions. Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave will get back to their three-tech position where they're lining up in the B-gap over the guard. And best of luck to these OCs having to game plan for this defensive front. That's going to be an absolute nightmare for whatever offensive coordinator has to put together that game plan each week. In the second round, uh, the, t the team went in a way that a lot of people didn't expect, and they went and drafted a center, Cam Jurgens from, from Nebraska. Uh, and, you know, it's uh, a move a lot of people didn't expect, but it, it wasn't a move that surprised Jason Kelsey. Uh, he actually said, you know, he had the opportunity to, to draft him, and he said, you know, he was one of the best prospects he's seen in the last couple of years. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on what we can expect from Jurgens, um, obviously this year and, and moving forward. Yeah, I just want to touch on how cool that was to see that Jason Kelsey is involved in just evaluating guys. I mean, how many times 
do you hear these stories about owners just stepping in and saying, no, this is our guy, we're going to pick him, especially here in the NFC East with Daniel Snyder. I mean, he's done that time and time again. Howie Roseman gives his staff, gives his players input, and Jeff Stoutland might carry the most weight of any position coach in the NFL. And if Jeff Stoutland and Jason Kelsey sign off on the move, I'm 100% in on it. And I look at the Landon Dickerson move last year where we're like, okay, I could see why they need this player. It doesn't really fit an immediate need, but you don't really draft to fit immediate needs because you end up with Danny Watkins in that case. You end up with Marcus Smith in that case. I believe they took their best player available on the board to fill a position where this team has been lucky to have a six round pick in Jason Kelsey, future Hall of Famer, fill in that position for so long and not have any hiccups there. Well, now we need to find a guy who can replicate what Ch- Kelsey does to an extent, put him in between, I mean, Jordan Mailata, Lane Johnson, Landon Dickerson, and whoever you want to put at right guard. This team might have 10 starting offensive linemen realistically. Cam Jurgens, he's only going to make the next step and the evolution past Jason Kelsey when he moves on that much smoother. That transition now should be a lot easier than saying, oh, Jason Kelsey retired. Do we move Landon Dickerson inside? Do we move Jason Kel- or Isaac Sayamalu inside? Do we just take one of these guys who maybe has never really snapped before, try him at center? No, you have Cam Jurgens, who is as identical to Jason Kelsey as I've seen in a center prospect in the last couple of years. You look at his athleticism, his ability to get up to the second level, how he reads and processes offensive line play, defensive line play. There's a reason Jason Kelsey likes him, and there's a reason I'm 100% on board with him. And looking at what the Eagles have done in the draft, picking defensive line, offensive line, that should shock absolutely nobody. I said it's like walking down the street in New York City. Somebody bumps you on the shoulder. You just keep going on your way. The Eagles draft offensive line or defensive line, yeah, it's what they do. We shouldn't be shocked at it at this point. They like to make sure they build from the inside out, and they're always going to continue to do that. One thing the Eagles don't do all the time is spend some 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 assets on acquiring a linebacker. And man, what a surprise this year that Nicobe Dean fell all the way to the third round. A guy who a lot of people had in the first round, going in the first round of the draft. Um, I just want to get your thoughts on why why he fell and, and what does it mean for this Eagles defense moving forward to be able to add that kind of impact prospect in the first round to take a look at his medicals and what the league knows is much more than what we know but Howie Roseman in his press conference after they made the selection and echoing what N'Kobe Dean said it seems like he's healthy it seems like he's going to come in and play right away and it is a pec injury it's not a, a knee injury if you look at um, Jalen Smith who the Cowboys drafted a couple years ago out of Notre Dame that was his big downfall He had a degenerative knee issue, and you've seen his de-escalation in play. With that pack, I think I've seen more Eagles in my career watching this team have pack injuries than maybe any other team. And these guys can come back relatively quickly from that. N'Kobe Dean, he's going to come in, and he is going to be that impact player that we tried to replicate after you lose Malcolm Jenkins, and you're just trying to find that heartbeat to the defense. Look at what N'Kobe Dean was to that Georgia defense last year. Arguably the best defense on the globe last year and one of the best in college football history. Pair him up with his line mate who he played behind where they have such an interconnectivity between the two. I think if you walk away, even if he doesn't start half the season, let's say, or let's say even red shirts, if you can get that impact player, paired next to guys like Kaiser White. Let Davian Taylor take less snaps so he can remain in the lineup. Have TJ Edwards fall into a role where he fits better than being an every down linebacker. Like I said, with Jordan Davis making everybody more efficient, I believe N'Kobe Dean is going to do that too. And you know, after that fall, that chip on his shoulder, man, that is a family sized bag of chips that he's going to be fighting off every day. And I will love to see the impact he makes in Lincoln Financial Field every week. He's going to be an instant fan favorite. He's going to be the leader of that defense. And God forbid anybody comes across the middle, I don't want to be hit by that guy at all. He might be 5'11", 
but he hits like a freight train, and he has the athleticism that this position hasn't seen since, goodness, I mean, nearly two decades. We haven't invested in a linebacker with this much talent since maybe D'Amico Ryan's in free agency, and even him, he was in the back end of his career. It's just going to be different to see quick athletic linebackers where we've seen these guys who – they run maybe four seven four eights chasing guys around in today's NFL. Despite all that talent we just talked about, the Eagles' best acquisition arguably uh, was the was the trade for wide receiver AJ Brown from the Tennessee Titans. So, what do you think he does for this Eagles offense, and what are the expectations now for Jalen Hurts this upcoming season? Yeah, I'll start with that second question. I think the expectations are that there's no excuses. You can't say, oh, they had Quez Watkins as their number two and Jalen Rager didn't produce and Devontae Smith was still a rookie. Well, Devontae Smith's going into his second year where he almost eclipsed 1,000 yards. Dallas Goddard's a top five bona fide tight end in this league. Miles Sanders, Kenny Gainwell, Boston Scott are one of the better trios that you have in the backfield in this league. And then you bring in A.J. Brown, who absolutely dominates the middle of the field where Jalen Hurts seemed to struggle last year. How do you fix that? Well, we have Dallas Goddard. We have A.J. Brown. If you don't trust those guys going over the middle, we're going to set up the next quarterback for success. So with A.J. Brown, you're going to see a guy who catches just about everything. It's like he has, I mean, stick him on his hands at any given time. He can catch any ball in any catch radius, over the middle, guys in his face, guys on him, 50-50 balls. He's going to get everything. He's also going to be a monster in the run after the catch area. He's going to open up the field for everybody else because now who do you double? I mean, you're going to double A.J. Brown. Oh, then Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard are wide open. Oh, you're going to bracket Dallas Goddard. Well, then you leave A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith in one-on-one coverage. Add to the fact that you still have Quez Watkins, who might be more efficient falling down to that third wide receiver role. You bring in a veteran, Zach Paschal, who's probably your seventh or eighth best pass catcher. Jalen Hurts has absolutely zero excuses to let this offense down. This should be a 25-point offense any day of the week, and they're going to have to win in that manner in this division where you look at the Dallas Cowboys They're continually adding to that offense where they have C.D. Lamb, they have Michael Gallup, they have Dak Prescott. They've only added to their offensive line. That's who you're going to have to compete with. And the NFC is wide open now. Russell Wilson's gone. The Packers aren't what they were. Tampa, they bring everybody back, but they're still getting older. Now is the time that you pounce. I think Howie Roseman recognized that, and it's been one of the things he's trying to do or tried to do the last couple months add one of these veteran wide receivers who needed to go into their second contract. Kelvin Ridley at first was their first target. But hey, if Kelvin Ridley never signs into a sports book and places a wager, this Eagles team might never have A.J. Brown. But now they have A.J. Brown, who is a perennial all-pro, a perennial pro bowler, and he's only going to add more 1,000-yard receiving seasons to his belt. You could say right now, They have three guys that could potentially eclipse a thousand yards in Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, and Dallas Goddard this season. After the NFL draft, you know, the next wave of free agency kicks off and and the Saints have already made a big move, adding Tyron Matthew. Uh, The Eagles have been rumored to have been trying to add a safety all offseason. So I just want to ask, where do you think this team goes from here in this next wave of free agency? I believe defensive back would have to be the avenue that they go. And uh, I believe that they'll try and bring in a veteran at the corner position. If you look at guys that Jonathan Gannon has coached at that position, I think Xavier Rhodes makes a ton of sense. You're very young at that second cornerback position. You have Zach McPherson, who was a fourth round pick last year. Tay Gawan, who you traded for. You bring in Mac McCain, Kari Vincent, a bunch of guys that are young and have potential but do they have instant starter ability? And that's what I'm kind of hesitant on. So I think that they would try to address that. As for safety, I don't know what they're going to do. And Howie Roseman said it the other day in his press conference after the draft that they might view that room more highly than what we view it as. And Anthony Harris, Marcus Epps being your one-two, you would expect them to be in more too high safety sets bring in those more athletic linebackers 
allow the corners on the outside to play man on man, and they're going to work a lot of your change down in that front seven. You're going to see the linebackers lining up towards the line of scrimmage. They're going to have five, six, seven guys, but not all those guys are going to rush the pass or they're going to drop back into coverage to kind of cover up those woes that you might have at safety. I'm the biggest advocate for safety. I've been pounding the table for the last five seasons for them to draft one. Malcolm Jenkins wasn't getting younger. Rodney McLeod wasn't getting younger. And I would say the most reactive position where you're saying, yeah, we need to go out and get a guy immediately would be the safety position. I don't love to take that avenue, but that's where they've set themselves up now. We'll see what they do once training camp hits, once OTAs hit, what they put out there in the first let's say, shell defense when we get the reports from the beat writers. I believe Marcus Epps and Anthony Harris are the plan right now because those top guys like Tyron Matthew, they're off the board. Could I see a guy like Jaquiski Tart who played for San Francisco last year, had a good past couple seasons come in on a cheaper deal, maybe a one-year deal? Yeah, I could absolutely see that. But defensive back, that has to be the next avenue because if you look at the holes, They've kind of filled everything else in. Defensive line, you legitimately can't make any sense of signing anybody else. They've brought in multiple linebackers, which they've never done before. Offense, they've drafted offensive line. They kept all their running backs around. They've added wide receivers. The QB is going to be the same. The only two positions we haven't talked about are corner and safety and punter, but we'll save that for another day. But right now, defensive back should be the next wave of free agency and how he season goes all the way until the first game so we've seen late season acquisitions if you go back to the super bowl year guys like legarrett blunt weren't acquired till the middle of may even a player like Corey graham wasn't acquired until august so this team is always open to the possibility of bringing in veterans even late into the stages of camp bring on training camp right there i can't believe it. it's only a month and a half away juno camilleri with locked on eagles will have all your updates with the team monday through friday